Oh, also, am I able to record or no? Uh, you should be able to. Okay. Oh, I see the live on Facebook. Good evening, everyone. My name is Joshua Reynolds, and I'm with American Legacy Network, and I am here today with V. Helena uh, from the Writers Haven. And so I'm going to read her bio really quickly, and then we're going to view a short clip from uh, one of her episodes that is actually hosted on American Legacy Network. And then we're going to get into talking about um, what makes V. Helena tick. So <laughs> let me read a little bit about uh, V. Helena so that we can uh, uh, properly introduce her. Uh, v. Helena is the executive producer and host of the Writer's Haven Show. An accomplished author, podcaster, television, and film producer, V. Helena has been, a, has been writing creatively for over 30 years and has secured degrees in the areas of radio, television, and film production, business administration, and law. Whew. She's written and produced a number of feature-length films, When I'm Ready, music videos, theater plays, and in 2010 established the Phoenix Rise and Entertainment, an entertainment conglomerate for book publishing and film video production. Uh, she is the author of two books of poetry and short stories, His Love is Freedom, His Love is Complete, and will release uh, her debut novel, The Women of Woodmost, in 2021. She's also working on a three-part suspense thriller series all set in her hometown of Washington, D.C. In 2020, V launched Literally Speaking, a podcast featuring influencers and thought leaders in discussion on topics from politics to swingers to mental health to climate change to Fury Fathom. If people are talking about it, they're talking about it. Catch the show on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. If you want to learn more about this amazing, phenomenal woman, please visit her website at www.vhelena.com for more information. And also be sure to follow her on all, this, all of the social media platforms. Wow. So, <laughs> good evening. How are you doing today? I am doing fabulous. Thank you so much for hosting me um, in the producer series. I, I'm absolutely honored. Great yes. to be here. Well, we're really excited to sit down with you and, and learn more about your creative process and, and how you have come to be who you are today. So uh, we're going to show a, a short clip uh, from one of your um, shows that are actually hosted on American Legacy Network. Awesome. And so we're going to get to that. And I'm going to share it with, via my screen so that everyone can watch for just a few minutes. Dreamcatchers, welcome to another exciting day in the Writer's Haven. I'm your host, V. Helena, and today we are over the moon in presenting our studio guest. Best-selling and award-winning author Marita Golden is here to share insights on writing and her personal writing journey. She's the author of 17 works of fiction and nonfiction, and her debut memoir, Migrations of the Heart, firmly set her on a trajectory of iconic literary greatness. Critically acclaimed, Migrations of the Heart is celebrating 35 years of literary success, and we are pleased to have Marita on the show to talk about her writing career from that point to her latest literary work, The Wide Circumference of Love. Join me in welcoming Marita Golden to The Haven. 
Melita, welcome to the Haven. I'm very excited to have you here with us and particularly excited about this anniversary for your memoir, Migrations of the Heart. Um, 35 years, this was your very first book. It exactly. hit the ground running. <laughs> Tell us about that experience and, and where were you before you began this writing journey? Well, I was 29 years old and I had just returned from living in Nigeria where I had been married mm -hmm. and had a great adventure. The marriage did not last and I had been told by the woman who was still my agent all these years after 30 some years that even though I wanted to write a novel I had a great story to tell in the story of growing up in the 60s mm -hmm. against a backdrop of black power and all of the things that were going on going to Africa Nigeria living as part of a Nigerian Yoruba family discovering my quote roots and then returning to the United States so she convinced me that I really should write the story of my life, of that experience, and for the time being, put the novel aside. And so it was, I had no idea that my very first book would be a memoir. Mm -hmm. And in those days, uh, what happened is that Migrations of the Heart was part of a whole group of memoirs by women, mostly, that ushered in the idea of stories about identity, women's lives, that they could be really important mm -hmm. contributions to literature. So um, it was a big surprise <laughs> to me and even more that the book became one that was adopted by universities and colleges and, and meant so much to so many people. So I'm very proud of it. Did you know at the time how impactful the book would be when you were just sitting and, and outlining and just going through the process. Did you have any idea of how 35 years later people would still turn to this book and just see that this, this is a work of art, truly? Well, I w wanted to make it impactful. I always write with very serious intent. That is, I write in order to introduce new ideas, um, to shake up what my reader thinks reality is and so one of the things I wanted to do in the book was I wanted to chronicle and capture for people who were not there what it meant like what it meant to be a black girl coming of age in the 60s getting black getting loud getting proud and I was very conscious that I had to put things in the book that people may not get anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So I really was documenting my experience. So I only know that it was my intent to write a book that could be considered important. Mm -hmm. And luckily, it was. Wow, wow, wow. Marita Golden. <laughs> and you're muted. You, thank you. Yes. <laughs> no so, so, so this was a short clip from your interview with Marita Golden. Yeah, that and was actually from season two. Okay. And we're we're now in season six, and she oh, has wow. since done another interview because she had a new book come out since then. So that was that's really cool to to watch that, um, and to see how far we've come, you know, since season one and two. You know, when you when you jump into um, a show series, um, you know, there's mistakes happening all over the place. And, you know, season one, you could probably see them <laughs> more right. so than, uh, than not. Uh, but we really fine tune the show. I mean, it's a well oiled machine. I was very thankful to have Marita um, come and join us. And, and since then, we've had some other big name authors come on. Um, so thank you for that, for sharing that with me. I haven't seen that show in forever. Of course, and we're excited to, to have that on the network. So let's get right into it. So how did you get into the industry? Industry, And this is twofold for you because you're both an author and a film producer. So how did you get into writing and how did you uh, translate that to becoming a film producer and a filmmaker? Wow. So, you know, storytelling has been something that I've been interested in for a long time. Um, it started off 
really when I was like, I, the farthest I can remember, I was maybe 12 years old. And, you know, writing music because there's story music and I used to be in a band. I was actually in two bands. And so um, music and writing lyrics, that was an outlet for me. Um, my dad bought me my first, compu my first uh, organ slash keyboard when I was around that age. So yeah, that, that's really when the juices of writing really happened for me. And um, uh, writing lyrics, th there's a, a, a clear um, synergy between lyrics and poetry. So poetry was like melded into that as well with the lyrics. Um, and then I started writing is uh, probably in high school. Um, I worked on the school newspaper. So, you know, I was a journalist, so to speak. Um, great story to tell. Uh, biggest, um, biggest story in high school for the high school paper was um, I got tickets to go to the Michael Jackson concert. Remember when it was at RFK Stadium in DC and um, I had gone through all these hoops to get press passes and, um, and actually got to meet people on the Jack team. I didn't get to meet them, but they were in the hotel when I went wow. to pick up my press passes. Um, so, I mean, for me, it was just the lengths that I would go to, to, um, to experience and to just jump out there and take risks because storytelling, sometimes there's, there's a hint of that. There's always that risk of will people like it? Um, you know, will they appreciate it as much as you do writing it? So I, I would say that the writing bug happened again when I was around 12-ish and flowed all the way through to today. I started um, with my short stories and poetry. The two books that you mentioned um, are books of poetry and short stories. And as you mentioned, um, I, I'm working actually on several writing projects as an author um and the women of woodmost is one that I'm, I'm hoping to have published in 2020 um i've submitted it uh it's with a publisher now so we'll wait and see what happens with that um but as a producer uh because i'm a writer producer um you know this show has been around since 2017 and um the the reason why i decided to do it was this idea that um, there are some great authors out there. And I know a lot of people like myself who mm -hmm. are also writers. It would be great if there was a show that um, we could bring together the, the folks who are doing it and doing it well uh, with those who are learning and to just have those folks um, just kind of connect in that way. And so that was the, the main premise behind creating the story, uh, the show. Um, and then it just evolved from it being just authors to filmmakers, to playwrights, to musicians, um, just kind of running the whole gam gamut of storytelling in its various forms. Right, so part of storytelling obviously is also uh, not only writing, but for a, a show uh, that you're doing, actually getting in contact with other writers and, and, sh and so that they can be people that you interview. So right now I'm interviewing you, but you're usually the person doing the interviewing. So as a producer, you know, what's the, <laughs> what's the, what's the creative? It's a lot of fun. I have, to <laughs> I have to tell you, I mean, cause like coming into it, I, I felt like honestly a little uneasy cause you're right. I'm used to being on the other side of the chair. So, um, We'll see how this works. <laughs> I'll try not to ask you any questions. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you do, no problem. But but yeah, so how do you go about finding people and connecting with people that you want to uh, uh, be on your show? Because, you know, part of producing a show uh, is is actually organizing and, you know, it goes beyond just being a writer. It goes, it, it's, there's a process that you have to go through to actually bring people on and get them uh, to be a part of it. So what was, what is that process like for you? Wow. Okay. So I kind of see that the answer in, in two parts. Um, I'll say that, you know, back in 2017, when I started the show, there really weren't a lot of, um, medias that were available 
for African American writers to promote their books. It used to be years ago, um, an author, regardless of the of the color, ethnicity, um, race, they they would fly into a city and then there'd be you know there'd be radio appearances, television appearances, you know you know carpet being rolled out um, for these artists um, who are writers and you know they're that not so much now. That's not happening so much, and particularly with African American writers. Mm. So um, it, it was a, a welcoming thing. I can't, with one exception, just about every author that I've asked to be on the show have said yes. And for those that I've asked and they weren't on the show, it was primarily because their people uh, <laughs> just for whatever reason didn't think that it was worth their time. Mm. Um, and so now I'm in a place, thankfully, that I'm getting called to, um, hey, I'm going to be in D.C. Um, such such a date. Um, you know, do you want to set up some studio time? And now with the Zoom, it makes it even easier. So um, since we've been in COVID, um, you know, as I'm getting emails or, or phone calls, it's, you know, you can be anywhere in the world and, you know, we can just zoom it in so so that's been great um and like i mentioned you know we're um in the actually sixth season but um with covid it kind of jacked everything up in, ter in terms of our scheduling for the season um but yeah just just being in this season and um having to transition to virtual versus doing it in the studio has has been a bit of a, a challenge to, but you know, to, to get back to your question, bottom line the answer is, um, you know, it, what there wasn't a, a place for writers to come in and talk about their craft. And so this venue just kind of, the show just kind of made it possible for that. So it was, a, it was a good thing for both sides. I wanted the talent because I wanted to showcase it for those who are writing and are seeking advice on how to do that um, successfully. And then there are the authors who want to promote their work. Um, so the two just kind of just came together. Wow. So have you had an interview that you can think of? And I know you said you're now in six seasons, so I'm gonna ask you to cherry pick one, but the, an interview that has particularly inspired you. So I know that your your people that you meet with and you talk to definitely inspire your viewers, but did you have you had a moment on your show in which you felt particularly inspired? Wow. That's that's an unfair question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't I can't just choose one, you know, one word. Oh wow. Okay. Yes. Yes, I can. Okay, so it's, it's two. Can okay. I do two? You can okay. do two. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> one was, um, it was uh, two filmmakers came on the show, um, two women, um, gosh, I'm blanking, Patty Smith and, oh my gosh. Okay, the other person's name will come, Lee Anderson. Okay, okay. those are the two names. Um, they are actually the founders of the Annapolis Film Festival. And um, I had them on the show and I really, really wanted them on the show because there are two women who have been in the industry, who have been on the television side, who have been on the film side. Um, and they came together, they joined forces um, and they, I think the Annapolis Film Festival is in its sixth or seventh year now. Um, but to have them on the show was so inspiring because the work that they do as filmmakers and as um, the founders of this film festival um, really, really, I think from a cinematic filmmaker perspective really does a great justice, a, a great service, I should say, to um, the film community. Um, so their stories of, you know, how they navigated um, the television and film industry um, individually and um, as a team and some of the stories that they shared um, about uh, sexism, um, 
even uh, instance of sexual harassment, you know, though those those stories were inspiring in that um, they didn't allow those experience to keep them away from something that they love. And that's that's filmmaking. And then um, the lengths that they go to to bring um, films to the screen, you know, some of the uh, films that you would see at the Annapolis Film Festival um, are, are big name films, big directors, big time um, actors. And she also go as far as having student films there as well. Um, and it's a great way to showcase the the art. Um, so that was inspiring. Um, another was um, I had a, uh, I'm, I'm debating on whether or not I can say her name. I think I can, um, but I'll say this. So I had a guest on the show. She had written a book and um, her story was um, one that was very inspiring in terms of the challenges that she faced being um, a rape victim and how she did not allow that experience to keep her from um, being a successful producer and filmmaker. Um, and when I say successful, I mean own. Mm -hmm. um, I mean uh, Netflix, I, I mean Hulu. I mean, she's way up in the stratosphere. Um, I think I can say her name because I mean, she was after all on the show. So anyone who saw, and we actually did a, a two part because um, it was such a great, great show. Um, but I want to make sure that I use the name that she wants me to use. So um, I know, and if she's like watching this, she's gonna be like, Valerie, just, just say it, it's okay. Um, I, I won't. I'm, I won't. Okay. But yes, no that was one of the inspired most shows. Wow. Wow. You'll have to watch all the shows to know who I'm talking about. <laughs> For those of you on Facebook that are listening, like, which show is she talking about? Um, I, but we got some really good feedback about it, so people probably know. And and actually, we we did that show right before COVID, so it's mm. one of the earlier shows. I don't even think it's in yet. Now, in, in case for our audience, you didn't notice, uh, V just also issued a challenge. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the challenge is to watch all of her shows. All of the shows. <laughs> all of the shows, all six seasons. So all that, that is, matters. yes. And so you that is- a, Jump in, you know, you're, you'll find, especially if you're a writer, you're gonna find something inspiring in, in our repertoire of shows, I'm sure. Positive. If you don't, Send me something in social media. Let me know. Let me know what it is that you want to see that you're not seeing. Mm -hmm. I'll definitely work to bring that to you because it is really all about the dream catchers. Definitely. And so we talked about what inspires you, but I want to pivot really quickly and ask you, you know, as a Black person in the industry, what type of obstacles and challenges have you faced, you know, getting your projects off the ground and, and just as a writer and a filmmaker in, in general? Wow. Well, I, I'll say as a writer and a filmmaker in general, um, I would say that funding is, is always uh, what slows down a project. Um, I, I, I can definitely answer this a different way if you ask me about the author side, but as a producer filmmaker, um, that is the biggest challenge in having the funding to do the kind of work that you want to do. I mean, I, I can come up, I can write scripts and come up with all kinds of ideas, um, but if I don't have the funding behind it to make it into a Michael Jackson video versus a PBS PSA, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just to give you an idea of the differences in, in cost, mm -hmm. um, then um, I wouldn't say to back away from it. I mean, you know, Spike Lee had put a second somebody's home and, um, and raised some money to do uh, do the right thing. Was it do the right? No, she's got to have it. That was mm -hmm. his 
his first film. Um, so, you know, he had a lot of people believing in him and, and he was definitely going to do that film and nothing was going to stop him from doing it. Um, so if, if you have um, fun, if fun issue as a filmmaker, then I would say go for it. And then the other thing is iPhone, you can certainly, I mean, I know there have been a whole film shot on an iPhone and that's not a lot of money, uh, but that's why I was saying for me, I might have an idea that would require a Michael Jackson video budget versus <laughs> a PSA. And I don't right now have that kind of money Mm -hmm. um, so I would sell it as a, as a writer, as a screenwriter versus trying to produce it on my own. Right. And but so, the author side is a totally different answer to your question. So how about the author side? Cause you are an author and that is a huge part of who you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the author side, definitely as an African-American writer, um, there has been some challenges and there's a real shakeup that's going on in the industry right now. I'm sure any of the writers that are listening um, are aware of um, a lot of the, I'm not going to say scandal, but um, upheaval in the publishing uh, world. And to that end, it appears that the publishing world is trying to to some degree, make amends for that. Um, and so I would say as an African-American writer, you know, dream catchers out there, if you have a novel or a short story or something that you want to publish, now is a good time for us to get our voices and get our stories out there. Um, so definitely, definitely um, look to see how you can take advantage of this time where there are some publishers that are actually actively looking for um, African-American voices um, to see if, if they will pick up their, their, um, their stories. So yeah, different answer on the author side. There's definitely, um, and to just give a little bit of detail of what I mean, just in case there are people who don't know what I mean. Um, the disparity in um, writing bonuses, for example, when there's some authors that'll get signed um, and they'll get like zero signing bonus. Um, and then there are others who are not of this hue that could get six figures um, to sign with a publisher, the same exact publisher. Then there's, you know, marketing and the disparity in how African-American authors are, um, are marketed, their work is marketed. Um, so I, I do feel, at least from what I'm hearing that, um, and actually from what I'm seeing, that the industry is uh, trying to make amends for that to some degree, but you know, we have a long way to go. Um, so definitely, if you're a writer out there, African-American, um, get your stories right out there, get it, get them done and get an agent. There are some publishers that are even accepting unagented work. Um, so definitely take advantage of this time. And how do people get in touch with those uh, publishers? You know, a lot of them will straight up have something on their websites. Um, there was, gosh, um, I'm trying, I'm blanking on, um, let's see, I might even have the Inkyard Press, for example, um, they were accepting, I I'm not sure if they are now, but I would go to their website and see, but they were accepting unagented work and they do, I think, YA um, young adult um, projects, books, novels. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would say go to, you know, Simon & Schuster or Harlequin, just, just go to their websites and see. Or um, they may have even posted it on their social media um, pages. So I would definitely connect in on their Instagram. I mean, everybody these days have 
Instagram, Facebook, Twitter even. Mm. So that's another um, way of just staying in touch with those publishers. Um, but definitely uh, they will post it on their website. Some of them will even go as far as um, putting out links on how to do a, um, you know, how, well, they'll give the instructions on like how many pages, um, how to do the, uh, gosh, I'm blanking on the letter, um, <laughs> the pitch letter, there we go. Mm -hmm. Uh, they'll give instructions on, on how to even do that, you know, to kind of help you out for those who aren't familiar with doing that. Wow. So, yeah, that's the best way, I think. So the resources are out there. The resources are definitely out there. It's just a matter of you being hungry enough to go out there and look for it. Mm. So speaking of being hungry enough. Uh, what kind of advice would you give a young person who is trying to either become an author, a filmmaker, or both? Mm. I would say, oh, okay, I'm going to do a quick PSA. If you're over the age of 18, vote. That's first thing, first piece of advice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I, would say, I would say to the young people, vote. Uh, but but to, your, um, to your question, I would say never, ever, 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 ever give up on yourself or your dreams. Um, if it's in your heart and it is God's purpose for your life to create stories that will enrich people, um, that will educate people, um, that will provide a, a voice that people are not familiar with, but it, it's something that needs to be heard. Um, definitely do it. Do it. I mean, as a writer, sit down and, and write. And the more you write, the better you'll get. Um, and also as a writer, read. Reading mm. is so, so important um, to the writing process, whether you're doing a screenplay or you're writing a book or you're writing a stage play. Um, writing, as a writer, you, you nurture and you craft your and hone your, your abilities and your skills by reading really good literature, um, you know, or, or seeing very well-written movies or a television series. Um, so definitely don't give up on yourself and really, really hone your, your craft. Um, those are really two important things. And if you can, get a mentor that's already doing um what you want to do um you know that's i think a really really important part of that when i was in film school i had mentors there who to this day um really it not only inspire me but i can always go to um for advice um as a matter of fact i just talked to one of them yesterday you know they're constantly in my mind and they'll quickly tell me you know if i <laughs> because they watch the show um and look at, you know they'll quickly will tell me hey you know you might want to do something with your intro it's it's not cute and you know you're representing you know the people who came before you so come on make sure you you get that together <laughs> so yeah th those are the three things okay. never give up hone your skills find a mentor now, I want to dig into the, the mentor piece a little bit, because I think that, uh, you know, a lot of people may be afraid of finding a mentor or not actually know how to navigate a mentor-mentee relationship, you know, so how does one find a mentor, identify a mentor, and what type of expectations should a person have of a mentor, and, and how would you suggest a young person or an up and coming person, uh, a young at heart person, uh, navigate <laughs> um, the process of, of, of gaining a mentor and nurturing that type of relationship? Wow, that's a great question. You know, um, I, I will say like for me with, um, with writing for the, as, as the example that I would use here in finding a mentor, um, one thing that I would do uh, is, or one thing that I did as a mentee 
was to um, read the work of that author. And it was in reading their work that I thought, wow, you know, I really love the way that this person writes and I would love to learn how to, to at least organize and structure my work in a way that would come out half as decent uh, as what that person did. Um, many times authors, especially um, known authors have a web address. And so their web address will have contact information. Um, many times the contact information is email. And you'd be surprised um, how many instances where the email that you actually are pulling from the website is, is their real email, or at least someone on their team that could send it to them. And I would just write, you know, just an email saying, hey, I've read such and such book and I loved it. And I'm also a writer. And, um, you know, can you give me some advice on, you know, how I can navigate this? And at least in my experience, um, I haven't had any problems with getting feedback because I think that people that are in a certain place in their career and in their art, they want to share. They want to talk to um, others who are looking to, um, to do what they've been doing. Um, so I, I really don't think it's hard at all. It's just a matter of you stepping out of maybe your comfort zone um, and just just going out there and, and asking the question. You know, if, if you don't ask, you, you will never know, right? Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's what I've done. And I've had great results. You know, remember I told you about the, the press pass for the Michael Jackson concert and, and just- Yes. <laughs> and I, I just kept pushing, pushing the envelope, you know, just, um, and I know my classmates were, we're like, what? You got press passes to the Michael Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. And, and I remember even talking to um, his press agent, uh, well, their press agent at the time. Um, and the, the woman gave it to me and she told me straight up, she said, you know what? You remind me of me when mm. I was young. And, you know, I had that hunger for, um, you know, this, this is what I wanted to do. And so I did everything I needed to do to get to that place. And so that's kind of like what it is when you're finding a mentor, you know, it's, it's all about what you can bring to your artistry um, to really firm it up. And part of that process um, could be, should be um, getting a mentor to kind of help you. If nothing else, um, navigating the publishing world as an author. Um, you know, my mentors, Marita Golden, Connie Briscoe, Victoria Christopher Murray, um, you know, these are names that are well known in the, um, in the literary industry. And, um, and they, you know, they've all been with or are with major publishers. And so that that's cool. That's great for me because I know I can pick up the phone and just call them and say, okay, this is what's going on with this publisher over here. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. um, so, so there's the, in this case of writing, there's the, um, you know, them kind of reading my work and, you know, being very honest about what they think. And that helps me to craft my, and hold my skill a lot better. Um, and then also helping me in breaking into the industry. Okay. And so I think another question just popped up uh, that I want to dig into a little bit. You mentioned, uh, we talked a little earlier about some of the obstacles, specifically with some publishers, you know, not actually offering a bonus or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But how do you navigate the business side? So there's a creative side, uh, which is the actual writing um, you know, getting in and filming and doing all that type of thing. But how do you navigate the business side of trying to get your work out there? That's a really good question. You know, and, and the reason why I keep saying that's a really good question, because that's something I would ask if I, <laughs> if I was on the other side and I was hosting this show. Um, and that's a question that I have asked many times on the show to some of the, some of the authors that come on. So um, you know, there's different routes, of course, to getting your work out there. 
Um, Self-publishing is always, always, always an option. And um, I strongly encourage self-publishing um, to anyone that is you know, looking to put their work out there. There's absolutely no, no reason um, why anybody should feel uh, that their work is less than if they self-publish. I know everybody wants to go for the brass ring and, um, you know, have the, uh, be signed by a major publisher, you know, get this book deal and all that. And that's ideal and that's great and that's wonderful when that happens. Um, but on the business side, um, at, at least with self-publishing, you have more control, of course. You know, you can control uh, what your book cover is going to look like. Not so much um, when you're with a publisher. Mm -hmm. um, I've even heard some authors who are with major publishers um, that have gone into it with the name of the book that they wrote and the publisher's like, no, because they know marketing, mm -hmm. right? You know, that that's, you know, once you hand the book over um, to them, they know the industry. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, whatever it is that they do with your, with your book and even with editing, mm -hmm. um, you know, th there are some editors is, is amazing and great to connect with an editor that um, works well with you and your final draft of your book. I mean, it's ideal. I've heard stories and that's what I love about my show is I have so many different authors come in with different experiences. Some of them have written with ma major publishing companies and they talked about um, that process of working with an editor. In one case, um, the author actually left that publishing company. Wow. Um, but if, if there were other things going on, I mean, marketing being one of them, um, but going back to self-publishing and, and the, the whole business of it and the difference of it um, is, you know, basically you're calling your own shots, you, you're finding um, your own printer, um, you are sometimes, many times you're taking care of the copywriting, which is easy to do, it's, it's not a, 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 big, a big push um, mm -hmm. obstacle at all to get that done. Um, so I, I would definitely encourage folks to get a professional editor to go through their book because many times when you're self-publishing and you've written a book and let's say you've read it five times, there's always going to be something in the print that you missed. Hmm. Um, you know, you meant they and it said the, but your eyes just go past it, you know, right. and so that mistake is there. Whereas if you have fresh eyes on it or you have a trained editor, looking at it, then, um, you know, they, they will pick up that kind of stuff. But, you know, on the business side, I would say probably the most challenging um, would be in the marketing, mm. the marketing of the book. But, you know, in today's age with um, social media um, and the way that it's used, um, it, it's not the same as it was 10 years ago for um, authors who are marketing their stuff. I mean, I think that they really did back then um, relied a lot on their publisher to do that work for them. And as a self-publisher, it was even more difficult because you didn't have social media to where it is today. Um, but now um, it's almost like e everything is leveling out. Um, the distribution, of course, is, is nice to have with a, a major, but you can have, you can do a distribution deal. Um, Amazon, for example, um, is probably the, the best distributor around and you can absolutely publish your book with Amazon. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I think the, the business of it, um, if you're not really good with social media and marketing, then that could be a challenge area for you as a, as an author. Mm -hmm. um, but outside of that, I think that business wise, um, the de the deck is stacked for you mm -hmm. um, as a self published author. 
Well, we have a couple of questions um, that are coming in from some of the viewers on Facebook. So okay. I'm going to pivot. Sure. Um, can you elaborate on the different styles of writing? <laughs> Elaborate on the different styles of writing. You mean like genres? Yes, of like writing? the different genres, the different styles. Um, or, or or writing styles. Right. Yeah, writing styles. Writing styles. Um. Hmm. Okay. Well, if we're talking about writing styles, I would say that the um. I'll use something that I heard someone else say. Um, there, there are pansters. I think is how it was. Uh. uh refer to, and those are the people that just kind of write um, out the seat of their, their pants. L mm -hmm. Let me just translate the way I understand because I'm trying to remember how that person explained it to me and, and I, I may screw that up. So let me just say it the way I, I think it is. Um, so there are folks like myself who will outline a story. So my, my style, my approach to writing, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, and I've written both, um, is to first outline whatever the project is that I'm working on at once the um, story comes to my head. And usually out before I start outlining, I will um, have a beginning, middle, end. I'll just kind of do a novel summary. And then when I'm plotting it out, um, I outline it. And the outlining is good for me because I'm a very organized planner kind of person. Um, and then also to see it outlined on paper like that, um, it allows me to move some things around if I need to, or allows me to um, maybe take things out or eliminate characters before I start writing. So I do all of this before I start writing. Mm -hmm. And my friend who was telling me about the panster told me what the name of those folks are, but I just can't remember <laughs> what it is. Um, the other style that I was referring to as a panster, again, this person that writes from the seat of their pants. So they just write, <laughs> they just vomit on the page. You know, there's no um, outlining. There's no, I, I, there is structure. I don't want to say there's no structure. I think there's definitely structure. Um, and I actually adore people who can write like that. I know a lot of writers who can write that way. And um, that is awesome. And they really put out some really, really great work. Great work. Um, so th those are the two styles that I'm most familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, as I said, um, the first one is, is how I do it. But I would say, you know, to that person that asked the question, and if they're asking um, because they're wondering, you know, what kind of style to embrace, I would say, you know, do what works for you. Um, there's a hybrid between the two that I mentioned too, um, that I've actually engaged in um, with the um, suspense thriller that I wrote last year, uh, where I, I had started off, I completely outlined, it was like 69 chapters. I completely outlined it, but then as I started writing it, other things came to my mind. So instead of going back and trying to put it together in, in those chapters, I just vomited it and wrote it. So I kind of did both mm -hmm. in that, um, in that hybrid. So I hope that answers your question. And I'm sorry if I misunderstood what you meant by styles. We do hope with it, that it did answer the question indeed. Um, so we do know that uh, you have something, a, a project coming out in 2021 uh, called the Women of Woodmost. Can are you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, or... sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, that project is actually pending with a publisher right now. Um, okay. So, but but I can tell you that um, it was birthed um, based on um relationships that i have with women who i absolutely adore so i mean basically it's a, about four women who live in this um community called woodmore are you familiar with woodmore 
Are you like like uh, Woodmore in, in Prince George's County, Woodmore? Yes. Yes, actually, my <laughs> actually, uh, yes, very much so. I, I I used to go to Woodmore Town Center almost daily to the Wegmans to to grab. Ah, okay, yeah. okay. So it's not about anyone there. Okay. <laughs> but but it kind of um, is a spin on that uh, way of life because. That is, for those of you who don't know, Woodmore is uh, one of the most affluent African-American communities in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of well-to-do people, we'll put it that way, a lot of well-to-do people live there. And so I wanted to tell a story about um, African-American folks who are in the high echelon of living and you know basically kind of talk about the shenanigans that goes <laughs> on behind the gates of those types of communities um so yeah and i'm very excited about that project and you know we'll see more to come anything else in the works that you can talk about or that you want to share with our audiences um i do actually have some production projects coming up um, there is a show that I absolutely cannot talk about because I signed an agreement, but, um, when, when we get to a place where things are really, really moving on that and it's okay for me to talk about it, I cannot wait to share, um, that project with you guys. Um, and then the only other thing um, that I can share um, is, oh, you know, guys, folks who live in the area, uh, the DMV, the DC, Maryland, Virginia area, mm -hmm. um, we have some really exciting programming that's coming out that I will be exec producing. And again, I'll, you know, hit everybody up on social media to let them know the details of it, but it's going to feature um, some, some of our young people. And I'm very excited about that because I love working with young people and, you know, they're going to be scripting out the show. They're going to be doing everything that, um, you would typically see in a show production, but it's going to be produced by teens and tweens. Um, so I'm very excited about, um, showing them that part of television production and, showing, having them navigate um, that. And hopefully we'll look to have careers in television, you know, when they graduate out of high school and go into college. Awesome. So we're nearing the end of our of our time here, but I do want to ask you a couple of fun questions. Um, and they, they're kind of rapid fire a little bit, but- uh, Okay, I'll, <laughs> so, I'll kind of show it, I promise. Okay, no, so- um, so we mentioned you mentioned music early on in, in our our discussion, and so who are your top five favorite musical artists? Oh my God! Okay, number one, Brenda Russell. I love Brenda Russell. Um, I just don't think people talk about her enough. Shaw Day. Uh, trying to think of some guys. Those those two, Anita Baker. Oh my God, Regina Bell. You said five. Yes. I have one. I think we're at four. Oh, four. Okay. okay. The uh, the fifth one, I'm trying to think of a guy. Kim. Kim. He's a classic, <laughs> definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and so this, this one might not be a fair question, but we're going to see. Uh, Top five favorite authors. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Toni Morrison. Loved her. Alice Walker, love her. Um, Bernice McFadden, I'm infatuated with her. Um, Marita Golden, Connie Risco, Victoria Christopher Murray. I think that's five. Yes, I think that's five. Okay. And the last one is when you're in your career, I'm going to set the scene for you. When okay. you're in your creative space. Okay. You're sitting down to write, or you're sitting down to plan out production. Um, what's your go-to snack? Oh, um, 
Wow. I'm trying to cut down on them Oreos. They're like crack to me. <laughs> I mean, I will, if I run out, I don't care what time it is. If the store is open, it could be one o'clock in the morning. I'll go get some if I need to have them. They're like crack to me. I post them on social media and I say, you know, sorry, they're on sale. And when they're on sale, it's crazy. Like they're right now, for those of you who are also into Oreos, they're on sale at the giant, they're $3.99. Okay, perfect. <laughs> thank you for, 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 uh, want to thank you very much for, uh, you know, spending the last uh, about hour with American Legacy Network. Again, uh, everyone, you can please watch all of her seasons of, <laughs> of, of Writer's Haven. Uh, uh, visit her website um, to, uh, to, to, to learn more about her and the work that she's doing. Her website is again, vhelena.com. Um, well, writershavenshow.com yes. for the show. Writershavenshow.com. Writershavenshow.com, okay. So writershavenshow.com. Um, and then also you do win a special award uh, for being the first uh, producer on the Meet the Producers um, uh, a, a series. And yeah. so, again, thank you so much for, for taking the time out. We do have uh, a couple of other, uh, mo oh, actually five more Meet the Producer shows. Our very next one, uh, everyone is going <clears> to <throat> happen this Thursday, so two nights from now, uh, right here at American Legacy Network. And I will be sitting down with Adrena Ifill. Yes. Um, and we will- She's also awesome, too. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, She's so- we're definitely looking Great. forward to that. Definitely, guys, tune in. Tune in. And, and if I could say, you know, if you have not yet subscribed to the American Legacy Network, um, you are really, really missing a very, very, very great treat. They have an amalgamation of not only films, but sports. I mean, there's just so much that is packed into this network. So if you guys have not already done it, definitely subscribe. You're, you're not going to want to miss a show. I say that all the time. <laughs> wow. Thank you for that. <laughs> and I definitely second that, that motion for everyone who's not yet subscribed to, uh, to travel over to American Legacy uh, Network TV uh, to subscribe today. So uh, thank you again, uh, V, and we'll see you all on Thursday. Okay, bye, Dreamcatchers. Thanks for joining us. See you later. And don't forget, catch fire on purpose.